Things aren't always what they might appear to be. For example, this decorative house plant you're looking at is actually an artfully disguised metal melting furnace. In this project, we're using equal parts of sand and plaster to make a simple backyard foundry that's powerful enough to melt scrap metal in seconds, but still pleasant enough to keep around for decoration. Let's start this project with a big bag of play sand and some plaster of Paris, both of which you can find at your local hardware store for under $20. We're also going to need a 10-quart steel bucket and a tablecloth to cover anything important because chances are this is going to get a bit messy. I found that this 2.5-quart bucket can be used for measuring the ingredients, but it also serves a more important purpose that you'll see in just a second. Now the recipe I'm using for this makeshift refractory lining is 1 and 3 quarter buckets full of plaster of Paris, 1 and 3 quarter buckets full of sand, and 1 and 1 quarter buckets filled with water. The moment the water touches the dry mix, the clock starts ticking and we've only got about 15 minutes before it all hardens up. So let's get busy mixing everything together. It's really important to get all the dry powder wet and work out any lumps as quickly as possible. And after mixing for a couple of minutes, it should be fairly runny and roughly all the same color. Now when you're convinced there aren't any lumps of powder left in the bucket, the refractory mix is ready for pouring. So let's carefully transfer it to the steel bucket as slowly as practical to minimize the splattering. There should be just enough fluid to fill the bucket about 3 inches from the top, and now if we bring back our plastic measuring bucket, we can use it to form the center of the foundry. I filled my bucket with water to give it a bit of weight, but anything like sand or rocks will work as well. And you can see that as we push the bucket into the center, the mixture rises upward, but it doesn't spill out. Now it's obvious that the mix is already starting to firm up, so let's try working the bucket up and down a few times to help level it before it sets. All we have to do now is hold still for two to three minutes. This will give the plaster just enough time to harden so the bucket stays in place even when we let go. All right, time for a little cleanup. Everything will still need about an hour to really harden up, but the plaster is still soft enough that we can clean and shape it to look really good. And while we're here, we may as well wipe the bucket down as well. When it looks the way you want it to, simply leave it for about an hour. Now while we're waiting, why don't we turn this old steel fire extinguisher into a custom crucible? You can tell it's made from steel because when we hold a magnet to it, it sticks. And magnets won't do that with aluminum. I depressurized the tank and unscrewed the valve from the top to make it safe and easy to cut in half with a hacksaw, which you can see just happened in less than a minute. Now the bottom part of the extinguisher is what we want for the crucible, because it's basically a steel cup, 3 inches in diameter and 5 inches tall. That's going to be the perfect size for our custom backyard foundry. At this point, the plaster should be pretty well set, so let's dump the water from the bucket, then use something like a pair of channel locks to grip one edge of the pail and pull gently toward the center. Now if we grip it with both hands and give it a bit of a twist, you can see the whole bucket pops loose and pulls right out. This just created an amazingly smooth surface, which gives this makeshift foundry a surprisingly professional look. The only features we're missing now are an air supply port and a lid, so let's make those next. Now I found that a 1 and 3 8 inch hole saw was the perfect size for accommodating this 1 inch steel tubing, and if we center the metal cutting blade with the top line on the bucket, we can carefully begin cutting through the metal wall. Once we're through the metal, it's easy to burrow down at about a 30 degree angle because the plaster hasn't fully cured yet and it cuts away like butter. Now we have a tight downward sloping hole that the blower tube fits perfectly into and it's strategically placed a few inches up from the bottom. Now the blower tube is really easy to make and starts with a 1 inch steel pipe like this. This is the business end that'll sit next to the hot coals in the foundry. We're also going to need a 1 inch PVC coupling as well as some 1 inch PVC pipe. You can see the threads on one half of the coupling screw onto the steel pipe and the slip adapter on the other end simply pushes onto the PVC tube. Now let's go one step further and make a lid to help retain the heat. I got a couple of 4 inch U-bolts from the hardware store and stood them upright in a 5 quart big mouth bucket filled with a half measure of our insulating mix. After an hour you can see the plaster is set and the whole thing pops free from the bucket giving us a nice little custom lid for the foundry. It still needs a vent hole for relieving pressure buildup and you could just form one when you're casting it or you could try drilling one with a 3 inch hole cutting saw like this. With a hole in the center you can see we end up with a nice thick lid that kind of looks like a giant white donut. This design works great for venting pressure and gives us the option to melt metal as well without even having to take the lid off the furnace. Just for fun I picked up a can of burnished amber spray paint and gave the foundry a couple coatings to make it look a little more attractive. If we get it fired up you can see the mini foundry gets so hot on the inside that it'll melt soda cans within seconds and fill a crucible with liquid aluminum. With this homemade furnace we have the power to liquefy aluminum in the backyard and cast just about any object we can think of. The best part is when you're not melting scrap metals rather than taking up space and looking terrible you can drop in a plant and instantly transform it into fashionable home decor. With this transforming flower pot foundry there's certainly more than meets the eye. And by the way if you run out of soda cans to melt you could try using it as a blacksmithing forge or even a barbecue for summertime grilling. After all it is fueled by charcoal briquettes. Well now you know how to use commonly available materials to build the mini metal foundry. Powerful enough to melt metal in seconds but still pleasant enough to keep around for decoration.